Howdy, everybody, and welcome to another brand new RPG Exploration Society. Uh, we, we, the, 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 the captions are all over the place, so I think only Megan has captions now this week, so I'm sorry about <laughs> that, but, but we'll, 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 we're working on it. We're working on it. And by we, I mean I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> we are teaching you the ropes of how to play Savage Worlds, including the uh, Deadlands setting from uh, Pinnacle Entertainment. And we have built some seriously fun characters over the last couple of weeks. And uh, you can always go back and check out the first two episodes uh, on our YouTube um, and get some character creation tips. But for now, it's game time. Plus, we have a giveaway, but more details on that shortly. For now, let's go around and introduce the society members who are joining me on this mission today, starting with... Noir. Bah! Oh, uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> bah! <laughs> that's, my pa- that's my panic noise. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Noir. I go by he, they. Uh, today, I'll be playing uh, Othello King, who uh, goes by he, him. Um, yeah. Uh, Othello has made some choices in his life. Are they the, are they the best choices? I mean, that's up, that's up for you to decide. But, uh, as where you can find me all over the internet as Dino Arding, the best Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. But that's uh, that's 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 me. That's everything. <laughs> Stop perceiving me now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and let's perceive uh, Megan. Ah, hi, I am Megan Cage, um, and I am playing Crystal Void, who is a uh, a forest witch who likes to stay in the forest and keep everyone else away from her and Franklin, her ghost, that um, follows her around. Um, Eventually, she's going to help this ghost uh, finish his unfinished business. But for now, I mean, until she can, well, Franklin's here. Um, So that's (laughs) Crystal Void for you. Uh, I'm Megan Caves. You can find me at Megan Caves. I do the things on the internet. I don't know. Follow me there. I'm here and I'm excited. <laughs> now stop perceiving me, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let us perceive uh, Nick. Hello. I'm Nick. Uh, I'm playing Denise Key, a g- gunslinger from the Seminole Nation. And um, I don't have main character syndrome, so I'm hoping that's going to keep me alive a little bit longer um, than it usually does. So uh, you can find me all over the internet at by underscore rogues on Twitter, just at by rogues everywhere else, including Twitch, TikTok, etc. cetera. Um, please continue to perceive me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you, everybody. I'm Dom Zook, your executive, executive producer, your GM, your showrunner here at Saving Throw. Uh, and now on to some housekeeping, um, wondering how, wait, what? Oh, I wrote this myself and I don't even know what I wrote. Okay. Hey, Uh, hey everybody. You know, we've got a giveaway going on right now. If you didn't know that, well, we do exclamation point giveaway. will give you the link to check it out. And through that giveaway, you can win such things as a Deadlands dice set. Um, which is, um, which was made by Norse Foundry. Uh, Norse Foundry also made this Deadlands dice tray, which you can win. Um, there's a, a, uh, a Princess Bride dice set, or dice set, Princess Bride playing cards, uh, uh, and also a Suede core rulebook and a Deadlands Weird West core rulebook. Uh, and, uh, a bunch of wild cards binnies, which, um, are, right... See, I think I've got one right here. Yeah, right here. That's the little saving throw logo, and then wild cards on there. There we go. Um, so uh, very cool stuff. So uh, it, it's really easy to enter that giveaway. There's there's a bunch of uh, uh, ways to gain entries from that. Um, if you are a, I will say, if you're a Ko-Fi subscriber, uh, you can quickly get I think 50 extra entries. Um, 
if you're already you don't have to like resubscribe or anything if you're already a subscriber just click the link and it will go go through and verify that you're a subscriber and you get those 50 points uh and um yeah there's uh, there's just a bunch of cool things the more you unlock the more you get um so definitely go check it out it's uh it's very cool um i will say first of all that the prize is limited to north america only uh and um uh, let me see. What did I not cover? USA, yeah. USA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Canada or Mexico. There are sim <laughs> simple ways to earn an entry, like visiting our YouTube channel or checking out our wiki. And there, there are more complex systems, uh, which can earn you a lot of bonus entries, like turning in a thousand channel points from Twitch, which you get channel points just by watching the channel. So, uh, over the next two episodes, two or three episodes, you should have, well earned over a thousand channel points so you'll be you can you can redeem that and a lot of you probably have thousands and thousands of channel points that you haven't been able to use before now you can um uh or become like i said becoming a ko-fi subscriber will also get you a bunch of points we will draw the winner live on our final episode so in th in three weeks time or is it two weeks time anyway the last episode uh, on june 21st uh, so make sure that uh, you uh, get get entries in every day up until then. And we will contact you via email. So even if you can't watch live, we will let you know that you won. Um, but if you can watch live, all the better. So good luck. Now, uh, I will say saving throw like PBS relies heavily on viewers like you. Over 90% of our income comes from you, uh, <laughs> which means that shows like this just would not happen without your support. Your Ko-Fi tips and subs go towards paying our casts, our crews. They pay for the music, that wonderful intro that you heard, that intro music from Zach Heidi, uh, the material that we get for giveaways, uh, for us to attend conventions, and more. So it 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 does. There is not a unused cent um, uh, that comes in. So consider supporting us on Ko-Fi and becoming a member of our Exploration Society yourself. Use exclamation point Ko-Fi in chat for a link. It's quick, it's easy, and with a tip, not even a subscription, but a tip of $15 uh, through Ko-Fi, you can send a toast to us, which we will read out loud. And we do have a toast, at least one toast uh, so far. Uh, and if you sub, you get a bunch of swag, like shirts and mugs. You get mugs like this, and you get little pins that were designed by uh um well they were designed by me but made by campaign coins um they're very cool uh and um yeah and your tips and subs also go towards unlocking some in-game rewards for our players here so use exclamation point unlocks to see what they are and see where we are in that uh list let me see oh my goodness oh wow okay there was like five that happened earlier. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You've unlocked the what first three thinking? things. Um, okay. Let me see what, what we need to do. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Wow. Thank you. Um, uh, there's two more, two more uh, goals that we're trying to hit tonight. If, if you are so generous and kind, uh, let your friends know, talk, talk to your neighbors um, and, and send them all here. Having said that, these episodes have all been generously sponsored by Pinnacle Entertainment, and we thank them very much for their support. Uh, honestly, this literally would not have happened if they were not able to support us. So the pressure is off for you watching right now. Thank you to Pinnacle Entertainment. Please do check them out. But if you do like what we do, please consider uh, making a continuing pledge on Ko-Fi. It really does help. Uh, and I, I also want to do a shout out to Campaign Coins. I mentioned them earlier. They make not only our uh, our Exploration Society pins, member pins, but they've also make tons of. Uh, let's see, is this where's my cash? I have I have a whole thing of cash somewhere. Oh, I don't know where they are. I should I should have that handy. But anyway, they make an awesome currency, which you can use as currency, as tokens, as bennies, uh, whatever you want. But uh, go check out. Um, campaign coins. Uh, and that's it for now. Um, so remember, giveaway, go through there. I'll keep reminding you. Okay, now, 
we have built some characters and uh, I just want to say, Gnome, feel better. We hope that you feel better. Uh, we're, we're sorry you couldn't make it today, but but we're thinking about you and we want you to feel better. Um, everyone wish Gnome to feel better, please, in chat. Uh, okay. Now, we've built a bunch of characters, but we haven't really talked about what these characters look like or uh, really kind of who they are, what their personality is. We have a little bit of their hindrances and stuff, but we don't really know their background or kind of where they're coming from. So uh, I would love y'all um, to to go and uh, um, kind of introduce your characters and um, tell us what they look like and any background information that you want to. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to start with Danitki. All right. Uh, Danitki is, um, kind of like average height. There's nothing really that stands out about her. Uh, long black hair, uh, brown skin. She usually wears a, like a collared black shirt and a red kind of red leather um vest and that's what i flavored the native armor as uh because every native knows that leather just everything bounces off leather so <laughs> um and she wears like a long red skirt with gold golden kind of trim um it doesn't show up well in the uh hero forge because they don't really have that but uh, it's more of a ruffle kind of around at the bottom. And she has a horse, um, Tohatska, which is Muskogee for Ash. Uh, it's a gray horse, dappled. And um, she just has wandered kind of wherever from where she was born in what would now be Oklahoma. Um, and she just... She's kind of aimless in what she's doing. There's no end goal, really. The end goal is just not to be in the same place for too long. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, that is Danitki. Hey, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Oklahoma, let us meet Crystal. Oh, oh, well, hello. Um, Crystal isn't from Oklahoma. Um, Speaking of I mean, Oklahoma, I guess she can be. Oklahoma. I guess she can be. It's just me who's <laughs> from Oklahoma. Um, hi, yes, Crystal, Crystal Void. She is, like I said before, a, uh, a forest witch. Um, and she, uh, and, and by forest, but which I mean, she keeps to herself and she has a little hut in the forest. Um, and to keep the, uh, Denzians of the towns nearby happy with her and avoid getting, uh, killed by them, she heals them occasionally, um, as she can and, or does other, other things for them. But she also has a lot of things in place to avoid, uh, people coming after her things, ways to scare people away. Mostly she keeps to herself along with Franklin, uh, the ghost who follows her around. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much her. Why she's traveling about. I don't know. We will find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, do you want to describe Franklin at all? We'll keep that a mystery. Um, uh, you know what? I, I, she actually has this dark skull that she carries around and talks to as Franklin. And I, I have it. I just forgot to. I'll, I'll go grab it in a second and I'll show you. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. So she just kind of occasionally will bring the skull out and sit there and talk to it. But she also talks to him outside of that because he's a ghost. Right. You know, yeah. He can be anywhere. So, duh. Yeah. Okay. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right. Uh, and moving on. Let's meet Othello. Howdy. Um, so Othello uh, stands about six feet tall. Uh, all his uh, clothing very, very much looks run down. Um, uh, unlike my compatriots here, I do not have a horse. 
I generally tend on the kindness of strangers for a ride, uh, preferably in carriages as it keeps me a little bit further away from the beasts. Um, uh, he's often bundled up even in extremely hot weather. Um, you know, his face is particularly gaunt. Um, he is, he's got ashen colored skin. It's, uh, it's, you, you can tell that the, the melanin in his skin has died. And instead of being the golden brown that it was in life, it's now more of a cold gray. Uh, and, and his eyes have a, a unnatural green tint behind the hazel brown in them. Mm. Uh, his boots are extremely worn from miles and miles of walking. Probably more miles walking than any living man could do, but uh, he doesn't necessarily have that problem. Um, the only thing that looks pristine on his person is uh, a guitar that he made himself from the wood of a willow tree uh, hmm. that he keeps strapped on his back. Um, and that's usually how he endears people to him, you know. So it's a good way to make the Travel go faster if you got a little bit of music and he plays that dirty Southern Delta music. Uh, he's a good old Mississippi boy. Mm -hmm. He's just try, just trying to, you know, get on day by day. For those that have a particularly keen eye, you might notice that in every shirt that he has, and it ain't many, there always seems to be a stain right at about the heart. Uh, it looks as though there's something seeping. Some might even say that it's blood if they look close enough. Um, but other than that, uh, he, you know, he, he does draw the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a former musician, it was his profession to to draw the gaze of people. And now it's something that he's trying to avoid, but he's having a hard time. Okay. Okay. So those are our characters. We will meet Charlie Warren, a.k.a. the Big Bazoo, our prospector, next week, hopefully. Uh, but uh, but right now, these are your characters. Um, I really quickly, uh, we've got three toasts that I want to read off before we get started here. Uh, five Foot Latina. Wishing you comfortable saddles, true shots, and free drinks at the local watering hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Neva and Omar, back in the saddle again. Feels good. It does feel good. Uh, thank you so much. And DJ Regular, I'd like to thank the cast for either allowing me to perceive them or being gracious as I inevitably make a bunch of typos while typing without looking at my screen so I do not perceive you. <laughs> Yeehaw. Thank you so much. Weehaw. <laughs> yes, remember, just for a $15 tip on Ko-Fi, just a tip, you don't even have to sub or anything like that. You can send us, we'll, we'll, we'll read just about anything. Just, you know, make it, keep it clean. Um, but if, if you write something bad that we don't want to read, like that makes it easy to ban you. So, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, a, it's your choice. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I have no patience. Um, okay. A question came up regarding the uh, potential for uh, players losing control of their characters, specifically our Harrowed, played by Noir, and our Witch, played by Megan. Uh, in the book, it goes to the GM, as these characters have essentially lost control and have been taken over or corrupted and are governed by an outside force. Uh, literally a demon or demons or the reckoners or whatever. Um, and every table I think will handle this a little bit differently and that's okay. Uh, for me, I, I love the concept, but I'm also very lucky in that I trust these players and would allow them to retain control under the premise that whoever these characters were before is gone. So they're beyond redemption, but while that might work for a session or two max, uh, and for our purposes here, that may be fine. 
ultimately it's no fun for anyone because you lose your posse. It, if characters are so diametrically opposed to what they're trying to do, it makes things excruciatingly difficult for not just for me, but for all of the players trying to reconcile that. So in Savage Worlds, the threat of loss of character is always and ever present. Um, it's, it's a swingy system by design. And that's honestly part of the appeal. Um, what can you build that has the highest survivability? And that's not even a min-max question, but it's it's more one of RP, honestly, uh, in my mind and at my tables. Uh, it makes for some daring decisions, at, which feel even riskier. Uh, it makes it makes some daring decisions feel even riskier, and the mundane do have a level of danger you wouldn't often find. So, if any of these characters lose control, we'll see what happens. Now, um, I will just really quickly give um, a how to play Savage Worlds. So these are the very basic mechanics of, of playing Savage Worlds so that our players know, so that you know at home, and you can kind of build off of this. It's deceptively easy to play. In general, whenever you are checking or rolling for something, you'll roll the die associated with that skill or trait plus a wild die. The wild die is that extra d6 that only wild cards get. So your PCs, your characters, or other notables in the game world, like a big bad or, or a named character of some kind or something like that. Um, the, the premise is that wild cards, wild cards are unique in the world. They, they have abilities beyond regular people. Um, and so they get a little bit of a bonus and that wild die can mean the difference between a failure and a success. It, 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 it helps swing things. So you've got two die roll both die and take the highest number between the two. You do not add the two together, just the highest number between the two. Uh, for example, if I need to make a persuasion roll, I have a D six in persuasion. So I'll roll a D six plus my wild die, which is another D six. Let's say the trait die, I get a four, while on my wild die, I get a three. I get to take the four. I do not get a seven. <laughs> I do not add them together. You just get the highest from whatever die rolled the highest. The Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. The target number for most checks is a four. So you're trying to meet or beat a four. This can be adjusted by me uh, or any GM, depending on the circumstances. It's dark out, the opponent has cover, uh, you have the high ground, etc. So four is usually the number you're looking to meet or beat. But there are two instances where this is not true, and that's in regards to combat. In melee combat, you must beat their parry for a success, uh, and to do damage to them after hitting them, whether in melee or range, you must meet or beat their toughness. More when we get into combat, okay? But just know, you're aiming for a four in most cases. So now, if either die rolls the highest number possible, so a six on a d6, an eight on a d8, that's an ace, and you can re-roll that die again, adding the result. You do not roll your wild die on re-rolls. Uh, so let's say that uh, I do that persuasion roll and my trait die, my persuasion skill, I got a six on my D6 and my wild die is a four. I can reroll the trait die again because it got a six. I reroll that again and I get a three. So now my total is nine. Six plus three is nine. That's a success with a raise. Um, so that can happen on either die. The wild die can... If you max out your wild die, if you got a six on your wild die, you can reroll the wild die again. Sometimes you get double aces or double aces, and both die roll the highest that they that they can, and then you reroll both of them together. However, you only take the highest number that you get. So if one die keeps acing and the other one doesn't, you don't get to pick and choose or anything like that. You you only get the highest. Um, so a raise, what's a raise? So a raise is any time you get an additional four points over the target number. So let's say that I'm trying to hit somebody with a parry of six. I'm trying to punch them. 
I have a D6 in fighting, so I will roll a D6 plus my wild die. My trait die, my fighting skill, rolls a three, but my wild die rolled a six. I can reroll that die and add the result. Now I roll it again and I get a five. That's a total of 11. Since that's four over the target number, which was six, their parry is a six. I was trying to meet or beat a six. It's a success with a raise. Had I gotten another six, I would have rerolled again and added even more. Had I rolled a 14 total, I would have had a success with two raises and so on and so forth. This just compounds. If you keep rolling and rolling and rolling and you keep getting multiples of four beyond your, your target number, you get lots of successes. Okay. So that's a really fun mechanic, I think. Okay, so to recap, for any trait or ability check or roll, you roll the die associated with it, plus your d6 wild die. You need to meet or beat the target number, which is normally a four, and scoring multiples of four above the target number awards a raise. If you don't score a four or better, you fail. Whatever you're trying to do doesn't happen. Uh, the GM might adjudicate that as being a mixed success, depending on the circumstances, but in general, it didn't work. Critical failure. If you roll double ones, that is a roll on the trait die, uh, that is a one on the trait die and a one on the wild die, it's a critical failure. This is bad, this is very bad. Uh, not only did your action not work, but, and you can't re-roll that with a binny, uh, but it went so badly that some horrible things happened to you. Could be you took um, some bumps and bruises, minus one fatigue, or maybe you let the devil out uh, and then you critically failed and you weren't able to regain control. Again, the possibilities are largely circumstantial. However, certain powers and abilities do have some specific mention of what happens when you roll a critical failure while attempting them. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, you can always try to do something that you're not skilled in. Unskilled rolls are always a D4 minus two. So you better hope that you ace. But um, there's no reason why you can't try something. You just, you're just not very good at it. So <laughs> you might not do very well. Um, but sometimes it works out. Uh, and lastly, unrolling for now, um, your friends can always help you out. They can offer what's called support. Assuming the GM allows it, again, this is situational, other players can help you out, um, or yeah, other players can help you out by making an important, help, <laughs> sorry, other people can help you make an important roll by rolling a skill of their own to support you. So let's say, uh, let's say Charlie Warren is digging for Ghost Rock and Crystal wants to help him out by cheering him on. So before Charlie rolls, Crystal will roll Persuasion. A success will give Charlie a plus one on his roll. A success with a raise will give him plus two. So note that you can't get anything higher than a plus four. Um, so if everyone tries to help you out, you can't get more than, than four bonus points from a support roll, except for strength checks. That's the only time you can add more uh, bonus support. Um, with that, let us begin. Saddle up. All right. Let me set the scene here. Oh, welcome to the Weird West, y'all. First up, I'm going to... Uh, dole out some bennies, but please, um, there is a way to do this in Foundry. That's the one thing I didn't look up how to do <laughs> before I did this. So just make a note uh, on your own, um, you know, on a piece of paper or something like that uh, about um, the bennies that you get. So you all get three bennies. Uh, and um, Charlie, if Charlie were here, Charlie would get an extra Benny because Charlie has the um, uh, luck edge. I'm going to turn down this rambunctious crew. They're having fun in the saloon. I can't. I don't know what to tell you. Um, 
So, yes, uh, yes, we are using Foundry to play the music as well. Uh, yeah, you can see all of that going on here. I'll just make this go little. There we go. Um, yes, so doing doing a lot of tech work behind the behind the uh, <laughs> behind the GM seat. Um, all right, uh, so you all have three, three, three. That's three. This is four, three bennies uh, amongst yourselves. But also, chat has unlocked the first tier. Everyone gets a bonus benny. Everyone. <gasps> yeah! So not hey, only bennies. not only do you all get. A bonus binny, but I do too. The GM <gasps> oh. gets gets a binny for every player. Ew. Oh, oh, but I thought you were saying bonus binny. So. But I get a bonus binny as well. <sighs> That's the part I dislike. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to use these fancy uh, campaign coins to track my binnies. These are beautiful. I think these are from Dusk City Outlaws. So, so I get one, two, three, and I get an extra on four. I would have gotten five, but... But no! But no! Franklin does not count, dumb! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more our missing player, but... I know, I know. But it's like, it's not very nice to not include Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> right because um, he's dead doesn't mean he's not one of us i know is franklin a wild card because if he is <laughs> um franklin says you should give us all an extra <laughs> yes franklin does say this oh franklin <laughs> um and and yes a dj regular does remind me um and shimmickson as well that yes if you sub uh, either on Ko-Fi or on Twitch, you can send a reroll either to the player pool, which means that uh, any player can use that, that um, but they run out when they run out. Um, or you can send it to me, which I get to use. So you just, just tell a, um, tell a uh, mod uh, who you're giving it to, and we'll go from there. Uh, and yeah, I do know that there's a little bit of an echo. I don't know what that's kind of coming from, but I, hopefully it's quiet enough you know, with the music and such that it's not quite coming through. Um, okay. Uh, you all find yourselves in a saloon. How you got here and why you're here, well, that's another story for now. But as you look at each other, you recognize these faces. These are people who have been by your side through thick and thin. There is no trouble you lot can't find your way into and out of just as easily. This, for lack of a better term, is your family. Now, this is your typical Old West drinking establishment. A rambunctious piano player chomps out tunes that fill the space at the far end of the room. Glasses clink. While ranch hands, miners, gunslingers, and cowpokes of all persuasions imbibe and make merry. The air is smoky, almost too smoky. It's dry. Maybe that's why everybody's drinking. And the night air breezes in through the saloon doors, adding a slight chill to the air as it mixes with the warmth of the lamplights. In the corner near the bar... A couple of card games are happening with attendees loudly proclaiming how great their hands are to others across the table who look on with a steely menace. As you survey the room, you all hear a voice near the bar. The bartender, a woman with uh, grayish locks, leathery skin, and a slight smile that'd make the Mona Lisa look practically pleased as punch. She calls out, What'll it be, strangers? So, what'll it be? Uh, well, what is the most um, uh, the 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 uh, most potent thing you have here? Uh, well, we don't really uh, carry much uh, beyond whiskey. Okay, 
whiskey will work just fine for me. And she's she'll turn uh, and look at everyone else. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. I'd just take uh, an empty glass if I could. You uh, in one empty glass. Make that three whiskeys. All right, three whiskeys. She sets up little shot glasses, bottle, she pours the bottle, spills a little bit on the uh, on the bar top, pushes the three whiskeys towards you. Uh, I take two of them and pull them near me and then push the empty glass and the other one to everyone else. And then she kind of looks around a bit. And when no one's looking, she pulls the skull out and sets the skull next to one of the glasses and then brings the other one. All right. Is this something you do normally? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, Daniki and Othello, you see this. And, and, uh, and Charlie as well. Charlie's also there. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, this is, this is regular as rain. This is, there's nothing, there's nothing strange about this. Doesn't look like anyone has seen you give a drink to your skull friend. Great. I, I look around and just like kind of quickly and then I pour it on the skull and then kind of wipe it off and put it back in my cloak. But no, there's Crystal. still like a wet spot on the, the counter. <laughs> No, Crystal, I gotta thank you. As long as I'm walking with you, I'm never the strangest fellow in the room. <laughs> oh, well, honestly, I anything I can do regarding that, I love to keep people away from us. <laughs> it's true. Compared to you two, I feel practically normal. Hmm. That's why you're the face. Otherwise, well, I mean, Franklin can't do it. I, I, I just don't understand why. I mean, I just think he's a right handsome fella. Oh, 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 you have made his day. <laughs> he's laughing. He's, he's, I mean, he's blushing. Oh, I know. I know. Well, I told her. I'm so, I, I told them. I'm so sorry. Well, you two keep it up. I'm going to see about getting some corn for us. Um, with that, I'd like to walk over to the piano player, pull up a chair, and pull out my guitar. Okay. Just kind of give them a look like your mind if I accompany. Perfect, perfect timing. Yeah, pull up, pull up your guitar. Let's uh, let's get this started. And uh, he kind of fits in, fits a a reel in, and um, kind of gets his legs ready. <laughs> and you realize eh, he wasn't playing at all. He was just pumping, pumping a player piano. <laughs> as hard as he could uh and uh and he gets ready and um yeah yeah you can uh you start to play i just it's, uh, gotta look at do that and go well that's certainly an easier way to earn some coin i'd imagine <laughs> yeah they don't they don't they don't pay me to play they they, they pay me to push <laughs> <laughs> well Let's see if we can play regardless. And uh, I would like to play. All right. Uh, I'm not going to make you roll for that. Um, you, you are you are playing. <laughs> you are playing. Uh, and um, I mean, you're, you're keeping up with, with whatever um, uh, real was in this piano. And uh, it's it's a it's a a rollicking tune, but, uh, you keep up with it ably and, and people are tipping their hats to you and, and, uh, and thanking you kindly and, and, um, maybe throwing a couple of coins your way as, as well as things kind of go on. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll like put the hat all right in front of my feet. Uh, don't be shy. If you like what you hear, uh, best sort of appreciation is the kind that jingles. Um, Crystal loves when Othello does this. Um, at any time we go somewhere and Othello does this, Crystal loves to go around and basically help encourage people to donate. Uh huh. Okay. By, you know, talking to them about how, isn't this music lovely? Don't you want to support the artist? <laughs> Uh, a lot of that kind of stuff and just getting in people's personal space. Right, right. 
uh, yeah, so you go around to each table and uh, and just kind of encourage them to listen and 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 maybe if they feel obliged or anything to to maybe throw a coin a fellow's way and and uh, keep things going. What about you, Daniki? I'm gonna follow uh, Crystal around and make sure she doesn't say anything too weird because we don't want to scare away potential donors. <laughs> Um, maybe making sure that that skull is a little out of sight, because I think that might scare away potential coin. <laughs> Most certainly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're kind of looking at, at this crowd, and and um, as Crystal's sort of moving through it, uh, you get the hair on the back of your neck kind of starts tingling, Danitki, and... Um, you you get a weird almost kind of shiver th- through you um as something just doesn't feel quite right uh, is this something i can attempt to notice oh you know you notice it into? you notice it um but um you right now you can't uh, there's nothing there's nothing you see um that that is out of place. You just get the feeling that all of this feels weird. You just get this odd sensation. That's and that's all you kind of feel. You you see the people laughing, the people playing cards, the people playing piano, listening to the piano. Everything looks okay. It just feels weird. And as you all move about and do these tasks, a voice calls out to you, Noir, and says, Hey, get her. The music suddenly stops. The saloon falls silent as all eyes turn to you. We're sorry. Sorry, friend, I couldn't hear you over the music. Well, is that you said? Before your eyes, the patrons of the saloon begin to shift in their appearance. Skin sloughs off, revealing withered, drying bones and hollow eyes. Jaws unhinge to show rows of sharp teeth unlike anything you've ever seen in a human. Some draw weapons, while others raise clawed hands, and they all begin wailing inhuman songs. The floor beneath you feels uneasy, almost like you're on a teeter-totter, and the sky outside has gone from a deep black haze to an unearthly green and purple malaise. None of you feel like this is right now, but you all feel like you must escape or be devoured. You look to the saloon doors and it's shimmering with what you can only tell through your experiences, maybe some kind of like force field. And the sound of buzzing just fills your ears. Now you have one action to deal with this in whatever way you see fit. We are going to run a quick encounter. Um, let me explain what a quick encounter is. This was requested heavily by viewers. They wanted to know how to run a quick encounter, so I will lay it out. Um, This can be done to move the story along without using any action cards. I like using quick encounters because it's just a really, it's, it's a, it's an easy way to run uh, a, um, a scene without kind of getting into combat or getting into a social uh, encounter or anything like that. It just, it just things run a little bit quickly. So we don't use action cards for this like we would with those. Uh, generally, a lot of GMs use this to adjudicate something that they maybe weren't prepared for, but want to allow the players to kind of go through it uh, and discover things that, you know, they 
they wouldn't have otherwise known. Um, but uh, yeah, we're using this as sort of a story device. The premise is super simple. Presented with a goal in mind, each character makes a skill roll and narratively describes the results along with the GM. There can be modifiers to these roles, as with any other role. Resolution of the actions is in the order it makes most sense. So if Deniki is trying to tie a knot and Othello is making the rope, Othello should go first. Failing a task might fail the whole encounter, depending on the task involved. For instance, if the posse is trying to get away in a wagon and Charlie fails his riding role, they're not going to easily get away. Uh, a quick encounter can be just one round of rolls, or it can involve additional rounds and narration uh, to get to the desired result. Determining success is subjective, but generally, if there are at least as many win wins as there are characters, it's a successful event. If not, a complication has likely thwarted the characters in some way. So, let's do this. Let's do a quick encounter. You all know now this, this is not right. And uh, you have this urge to get up and either deal with the situation or try and get out of there in some way or do something. But uh, you each have one action to do this on. So what would you like to do? Um, who wants to go first? Hmm. Okay, so everybody in the room has, like, we're just trying to get away. Basically, I mean, yeah, you can, you, you've got, basically, you've got a bunch of, um, I don't know, zombies of some kind or, or something that are all encroaching on you right now. Okay. So I would like to try and use some magic here to see if I can just buy myself some time. Um, so let's see. Uh, I want to use... Um, I call it wicked witch is what I named it, uh, which is fear um, to um, essentially make myself seem scarier. So maybe they'll give me some space, to, give us some space to run away. Okay. All right. So okay, I'm going to spell casting. I'm going to mm -hmm. roll my D eight, which is my spell casting and my wild die, my D six. Uh, and I got a five. Okay. That's a success. So, um, what, what does your wicked witch look like exactly? You get bigger or, or the illusion of yeah. you? So basically I make myself appear to get like everything to get a little bit longer, taller, thinner, stretched out, teeth longer, eyes bigger, uh, jaw uh, drops down lower, that kind of thing. Fingers longer, sharper. Uh, and she just kind of, she kind of starts to back away. <laughs> right. But also trying to see if she can scare anyone uh, just to give us some time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, that definitely uh, it, it goes off and the creatures, the few creatures that are around you kind of see that and they, they cower and they, they start to retreat back, um, allowing you to kind of make a run for it and reach the saloon door. You can't penetrate the field that's blocking the door, but you're there now. Um, Franklin, it's working so far. She just says as she goes over there. Uh, okay. Who's next? Um, looking around me, can I see if there are any other exits? Like a back door or anything that I can see from here? Usually there's not only one way in, one way out. Yeah. Um, usually, 
that's the case. This uh, is a trap to begin with. Yeah, it, 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 you know, you knew when you walked in here, you, you knew that there were exits. There, there were stair, staircases that went up probably to rooms or something like that. And, and you remember seeing them, but they're not there anymore. And, um, the windows and everything just kind of have that kind of shimmer along them. Uh, so you're not entirely sure if, if that's something, you know, if that's an escape route or not, but you kind of run and look where the stairs used to be. You're not seeing them anymore. Where there was a back door, there isn't one anymore. What, what, how, how, what would you like to do? Can I call to my horse like a whistle and see if he can hear me? You can. I'm wondering if this is something that can be broken from the outside. Sure. Yeah. Um, give me a, uh, well, give me a writing roll. Okay. Uh, my writing is, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, that's a six total. Okay. So you rolled your wild die and your other die, but the, the six, oh, did you, it was a, what? Five and a one. Oh, okay. So you don't add the two. Uh, oh, five you just, then. That's a five. Okay, great. Yeah, because I was like, wait, if you got a six, then you probably need oh, to reroll that. Uh, so a five. That's a success. So you uh, you whistle out for your horse, and um, very faintly, you hear a whinny. Um, but it sounds. It sounds ethereal. Um, and you've heard of places like this, sort of rifts in the world that lead to the Deadlands. And you're not entirely sure what could be causing this, but you have the reassurance that your horse is out there somewhere. And you make a run for the door. You can't penetrate, but now Crystal, you and Crystal both kind of push, and it starts to feel a little bit pliable. All right, Othello. Uh, upon seeing my two compatriots having a hard time opening that there window, I'd like to make my way over there. And uh, I kind of muttered to myself, I'm not giving you what you want today, but I will harness that supernatural strength of mine and uh, take a take a nearby table and throw it through the window so that hopefully the three of us can make our immediate exit. OK, um, give me a um, give me a fighting role. All right. All right, yeah. Um, uh, it's asked me a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, I'm gonna just press that there roll button, and I got a seven. Uh, seven on a D eight. Uh, I I believe I have a D six for fighting. Um, I am not certain as to what is going on. But I did it through Foundry. Okay, so. yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, Foundry and Foundry, you rolled uh, your wild die rolled a six, which is the highest number on the wild die. So you got to re-roll that, uh, and on the next re-roll, as very often it happens in Savage Worlds, you got a one. So uh, you got a seven, one shy of getting a raise on that, um, but uh, you did succeed. So with your strength. And Charlie is also pushing on this door and taking his pickaxe and slamming into and ripples of energy go flying out. And you take a table and you hurl it at the saloon Pardon. door. And, Pardon me, ladies. <laughs> and it, it oh, just excuse me. smashes and a blinding light just explodes. And you all kind of take cover and 
uh, it's suddenly very quiet. And you each bolt awake. You're covered in sweat and breathing heavily. The soft chirp of insects permeates the chill night air. But you each awake alone. You have no idea who those mysterious strangers were who fought with you. But you definitely felt connected to them in some way. Once dawn breaks, you can set about your daily business. Uh, some of you are just arriving now into the town of Gumption, Utah. And some of you have been in these parts for a while, maybe. What would y'all like to do? Well, I'd imagine I could always do with a little bit more coin. Seems to be the only thing that the living give a shit about. So I'd like to find a place that wouldn't terribly mind my playing. Somewhere preferably busy. I put my hat down. Hopefully find a place under some shade. Now I begin to play. Yeah, you um uh just kind of looking at the um the town, it's 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 set up like a you know, like most small towns in the West, there's there's not a whole lot of people here. This looks like it used to be a mining town. You see an assay office, uh, you see a sheriff's uh, uh, office, and um, you you see a saloon and a hotel and and some other things. But there's a covered boardwalk and uh, a few places to sit. So if you want, you can just kind of take note and. Whip out the old guitar and start plucking a tune. What about the rest of you? I think that I've just come into town and since I, I mostly just pass through places like this, I'm going to find some place to replenish my stores and supplies before I get underway again. Uh, I'm much the same in that I live outside of the town and I uh, come in uh, as rarely as I can get away from and uh, or get away with and I am uh, resupplying essentially. Okay. Um, Crystal and Danitki, you uh, um you make your way into town separately, um, and you, um, Crystal, you, you've gotten there before. This is the town that you generally do pickups from when, when you need to. You, you usually get, get a few supplies and then head back out to your claim out far out into the forest. And uh, generally no one bothers you, and they kind of know, oh, here comes the weird lady. <laughs> in the town. Um, but you don't see the people that you normally see. It it seems almost desolate. And uh, um, the, the wind just kind of whips up the dust. And you hear the, the clacking of shutters hitting windows. And... Uh, you kind of, okay, all right, and uh, make your way over to the general store. And um, the store, there's a there's several large boards blocking the uh, door. And uh, you can't see into, it's pitch black inside when you try to peek through the, um, the window. And as you're doing that, Denitki, you ride in, um, and you've you've come through Gumption maybe once or twice, 
uh, and you're struck with the same kind of desolate feel. Um, and uh, you make your way over to the general store, um, and you see uh, a woman with dark black hair, black clothes, trying to get in. Am I struck with any kind of sense of familiarity? Um, give me a, um, give me a notice roll. All right. That would be notice. All right. Six. I rolled a six on my D six. Oh, you rolled a six on your D six. You aced it, so you can re-roll that. All right. What'd you get on the other die? A three. Okay. So, uh, so what'd you get on the re-roll? Um, hang on, let me. A three. Okay, so that's a nine total. That is a success with a raise. Uh, so, yeah, you uh, you immediately clock this person from your dream. And the name is on the tip of your tongue. You've almost got it. Uh, but, but flashes of that dream are coming back to you in waves. And... Uh, you notice that, and not only that, but you hear the pluck of a guitar coming off the side, the opposite side of the of the main drag there, and uh, um, you see someone in a long brimmed, a wide brimmed hat rather, uh, and dark clothes, with a nice willow wood guitar, just kind of plucking out. A tune. And you recognize that person too. These are both people from your dream. And I even though uh Gnome's not here, I'm I'm they are here. You also do see Charlie Warren, but that's about all I'm gonna say. Charlie Warren is just gonna follow you around for the rest of the <laughs> section. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna describe everything that Charlie does. But uh be like, do we know each other? Yeah. Like, oh, Schrodinger's yeah. Charlie. Yeah, it's Schrodinger's <laughs> Charlie. Um uh Yeah, yeah. So you 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 do see both of them. Now I think it would be weird to walk up to someone and be like, Hey, I dreamt about you last night, so I'm just gonna play it by ear and not say that. Okay, yeah, that that might be wise. That might be wise. <laughs> it's the West. It's the weird West. I don't know if they're as weird in real life as they were in my dreams. <laughs> right. <laughs> Couldn't be, right? Couldn't be. There's no one that weird around here, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you kind of uh, pull up and um, maybe tie off the horse. And uh, Crystal, you, you hear the horse kind of behind you. Um, and you see this person get off the horse. Would I recognize her? Give me a notice roll. It's going to be that Spider-Man meme. We're just going to punch at each other and be like, eh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Notice D6. Star-crossed party <laughs> members. Yes. <laughs> I got a four. That's a success. You do recognize this person. You're you don't get as many uh, as it does. It's not quite tip of your tongue knowledge, and you do not clock a fellow, but you do recognize Danitki and um, piece together that you. they are they are the person that you dreamt about. You she she, she just kind of goes over to you. you. You seem familiar. Have I healed you before? Well, you see, it's uh, mighty strange you say that, because I was just thinking that you seem familiar to me. But I swear we haven't actually met before, at least not in, uh, not in our waking hours. 
I'm clocking her as she's she's like dressed very strange, kind of very unique. She's like giving me vibes and thinking, okay, maybe I can be a little bit. She'll believe. I think she'll believe me if I say that. I saw her in like an other world realm. Like she seems like the kind of person who would buy that. Yeah. Yeah. You get that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A fellow. Give me a notice roll. Don't mind if I do. All right. I'll just press this here button. <laughs> <laughs> and it does all the work for me. I like that. Mm. I got a five. Nice. Uh, so yes, um, you see um, a couple people. You see the horse for sure right in front of you, and you recognize that person who was riding that horse. Again, you don't know for sure who they are, but you recognize them from that weird dream you had last night. Maybe the one you were kind of itching to write a song about or something right now that's just sort of eating away at you. And uh, you you get a feeling like these are people that you might know. Well, that's not keep them waiting. Strap up the guitar. Start heading on over there. Did anyone pay him? Uh, in the dream? Oh, no, no. I mean, like, he sat down to play his guitar for coin. Did anyone... Is there no one in the town at all? He was playing... Uh, oh, that's so sad. I'm sorry. That's the life of a musician, really. No, I, mean, I know. I I'm relate. in there. Yeah, me yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just like, man, no one came here tonight. This stinks. <laughs> yeah. It's and- no longer a fantasy. <laughs> it's, it's- We're like, oh, this is too real. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And it's strange because you, you definitely... Othello, when when you start playing the guitar, like that's a interesting enough thing here. There's no TV, there's no radio, you know. Um, it's it's like a, a traveling show has come to town almost, and and it brings people out. Usually, it brings at least the children out uh, who might be curious, but no one came. Yes, sir. This this will does seem to be well and truly dry but let's let's see if perhaps i might be able to coat some coins out of these two here (laughs) uh (laughs) so yeah um uh crystal and denitki you uh the the guitar music kind of stops and you see a fellow kind of making it's way over to you. I mean, y'all no trouble. It's I'm gonna say hello. Hello, Franklin. Say hello. I don't know why, but that is not nearly as odd as it should be. I had like I just have this moment of realization where I look away and I'm like, oh my god, it's the same amount of weird as my dream. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, Megan, you here. Hello. Oh. Well, Franklin says hi. I guess. Well, right. hello, Franklin. Oh, I apologize. He is my ghost. <laughs> Should have said that. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know where my manners have gone. It is a pleasure to meet you both, all three of you, Franklin. Uh, I am Othello King, traveling musicians around these parts. Uh, uh question, Dom. <laughs> Would I? <laughs> Franklin's jamming now. Uh, yeah. Would I, uh, would I know what Othello is? Would I be able, would I have that knowledge? Yes, uh, you would. Um, uh, give me an occult roll at a, uh, plus two. Occult. 
<laughs> Apparently the music liked it when I said plus two. <laughs> oh, I, 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 oh, I didn't ace it. I'm oh. so sad now. But I still got a five. Oh, at a plus two, that's a seven. That's a seven. One shy of uh, success with the race. Um, let me see. Did we get any other... Okay, real quick, a toast from Shimixon. Y'all going to be wishing you had that D12 in boating very soon. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, man. I don't think I need to breathe, so we'll see about that. <laughs> Good point. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, holy cow, okay, we are, we are 20 away from the next to last tier tonight. We are oh, 70 hell. away from the last tier tonight. Boy. Um, yes. Okay. So uh, you, um, you know that this is a Herod. And you have probably come across descriptions of them and uh, might have heard a tall tale or two um, but in your line of work Herods are are a known quantity and um, you can even feel feel the, the you can't feel the Manitou behind the the harrowed but the black magic that you tap into almost continually you kind of feel that from um othello and othello you also feel that connection that your manitou has to the deadlands you feel it kind of pulling a a sense from Crystal as you talk to her. You're not sure why, but you're getting a sense that this is a person with magical ability. Well, it is it. truly a genuine pleasure to meet all three of you again. My name you is Othello King. Have a friend as well. Friend. Friend? Is it a friend? I guess you answer that question. No, ma'am, I would not call it a friend. I would call it necessary. Ah, yes. That is very literally true. <laughs> yes, yes, Franklin. Yes, I know. I agree. Yes. Hey, Dom. Yes. Does my horse have a reaction to Othello? Uh. Good point. Yes. Um, uh, Tohatki? Did I say that right? Tohatka. Tohatka. Tohatka um, kind of, you've tied Tohatka up uh, uh, to a hitching post, but Tohatka gives a, um, it pulls at the, the tie a little bit and kind of backs up um, as it sees. And it's just trying to make its way away from Othello as much as possible. And uh, you, uh, Crystal and Danitki, you, um, there is a bit of a smell coming from Othello. It's the old West, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe he just hasn't bathed in a long time. No offense, y'all just smell real bad. <laughs> <laughs> you you have to accept my most sincere apologies. Horses tend to get a little spooked by my presence. I've never been too keen on the critters myself, so I suppose that the feeling is finally come mutual. <laughs> they don't always like dead things, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my! As you uh. As you are talking, you um, you hear uh, 
disjointed piano playing coming from the saloon. I feel like it is odd that there is no one around, yet there is a weird piano playing at the saloon. Maybe and there's it is an so event we're missing. And it is severely out of tune from the sound of it. Oh, yes. Well, that's... I do not like it. Um, it feels like uh, we have been drawn together somehow. Well, I didn't want to say anything, considering that I imagine it'd be quite off-putting to walk up to strangers and say such, but I do feel a certain draw to the two of you. I believe I may have had a bit of a dream with you two. Huh. Well, that could mean so many different things. I mean, whenever you start dealing with magic and you deal with with dreams it's a whole other plane of existence it could mean that we're all about to die it could mean that we're about to save the world it could mean that the world's about to get a lot worse but whatever i do on due respect stranger i don't meddle with magic oh well no but that demon inside your head does you I'm are here called the out. Way out of my death. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just you like are. over there trying to calm my horse down. Like, hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, I stay back I, home. I think our fellow seeing her trying to calm the horse down takes a couple of steps backwards away from it and just goes uh and look like dead glares at Crystal. And goes, you certainly are whip smart, aren't you? Oh, I try to be right, Franklin. I mean, I would be nothing without Franklin, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but no way, offense yeah. intended. I think a, a, a man or two can be quite helpful to have around at times, as long as they don't take over and make you go on some crazy rampage. But, you know, I know what to do, I think, if that happens. <laughs> That's um, a not big if. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, quite. There are so many elements that go into it. It's quite interesting, actually. What I don't understand, though, is there's there's Ocello. Oh, I don't have. Have we introduced our names to each other? No. Do we uh, actually do that? No, I, I, I introduced myself. I've you been did? waiting okay. patiently for the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, she says that she'll go. Oh. I haven't introduced myself, have I? If I, well, if I did, I, I'm sorry to repeat it, but I am Crystal Void, a local, well, as the town would call me, forest witch, although they don't always use witch because, you know, around here, the connotations of that means that I might not have a, a throat in the morning. So anyway, <laughs> I've said too much. I know, Franklin, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Franklin's like, geez, woman, stop oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, Danitki. That's Danitki. all. Oh. And that, that's an awfully sweet name. Well, what, thank uh, you. What kind of uh, otherworldly things are you about, then, if there's the two of us and you? It's interesting. Or maybe it's your horse. I don't know. Uh, well, as far as I'm aware... <laughs> I'm just a human. Um, unless there is something about me that I just am not aware in all of my years of life, which, you know, I'm starting to think might be a possibility given everything that I've experienced in the past couple of days. Ah, oh. yes. Interesting. Well, I feel I do have like... a gun, though. Oh! Well, those do seem to be uh, quite handy around here. Yes. It's true. Well, yes. if it makes you feel better, I consider myself human as well. I just expired as all. Well, aren't we all fun little humans? <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine yeah. it's about time for us to go tend to our challenged piano player. Yes, yes. Let's go see what's happening with that. I'm getting deja vu. Um, are you just walking up or 
you gonna I'm, I'm doing that cool thing in westerns where I'm like <laughs> open the doors parting, open. parting the saloon doors <laughs> yeah nice i'm going to let him and i'm going to keep back just a little bit in case i need to be in a decent range are you drawing Should your I... weapons at all uh Oh, no, I got my knife. It's, it's it's on my person. If I need it, I'll pull it out. I have a quick draw holster, so I'll just put my hand on the uh, on the base there in case I do need to draw it. Right. But I don't want to be overtly hostile. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. In the in the weird west, in the wild west, having your gun out, you meant to shoot it. So uh, so you keep it. You keep your hand on the handle and... Enough that anyone looking would know I'm in business. Absolutely. What about you, Crystal? Um, I mean, I'm always prepared for something, but I don't, I, I don't pull out any weapons. I would probably prep for magic. Okay. So, Othello, you... Part... The saloon doors and uh, you walk into a dimly lit saloon and um, you see uh, a piano in the corner and you see a woman um, struggling mightily with this piano, uh, clearly trying to uh, either tune it or um, uh you don't know, pull a reel through or, or something like that, but but just these sounds of blank, 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 uh, as she grabs and she puts a foot up on the piano and she says, you freaking murmur, little piece of shit. Pardon me, ma'am. And she, she lets go and she falls back and she draws a gun and uh, oh, uh, sorry. You, you I mean, scared me. Fine. She you holsters it. Trigger, it just be a bit redundant. I was wondering if I might be able to give you a hand. Uh, no, no, no. It's just this. It's a stupid piano. It, it's supposed to be a player piano, so I don't have to worry about it. But it's it's not working right. And I, I just I don't have the 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 know how to get it working. And anyways, I don't know. There's there's much point in getting it working anyway. Uh, what, what can I, what can I do for you? Do, 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 Danitke and Crystal, do you come through the door? Yeah, I think I would have come behind, uh, Othello just to kind of see. She's, she's overconfident, so she thinks yeah. she can handle it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so you, uh, you poke your head in and, um, you uh uh you both see this woman um she's got blonde hair uh pulled into a braid that kind of goes down her back a little bit past her shoulders uh her face is is red um not ruddy not tan so much but looks like it's it's red from just sort of being out in the heat and and working hard and uh she pulls a uh a, a dish towel um, out from her belt, out her gun belt, and uh, walks over to the bar top, and starts wiping it down. Uh, what what can I get y'all? Anything? Please say something. <laughs> uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Oh no, by all means, I, I just, we can order whiskey, I suppose. <laughs> Whiskey. Yeah, I can do whiskey. I can do whiskey. Okay, one second. And uh, she pulls out. Uh, so it's uh, whiskey for the four of you. I'll just take yeah. an empty glass if you don't mind. Ah, I'll, five. I'll pay the price of whiskey. Four oh. whiskeys and one empty glass. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and if I might, would you mind terribly if I try my hand at that there piano? <laughs> Be my guest. Thank you kindly. And uh, she pours four glasses of whiskey and hands them over to you all. Um, Othello, hmm? 
Uh, give me a repair roll. Oh, crap. I was hoping it was going to be performance. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Where is... So oh, sorry. One second. I think I'm unskilled in it. Yeah, I think you are. Oh, yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, I got a five. Hey, see the oh. wild, the wild die, the wild die is your friend. You aced it on the wild die, which meant you have to re-roll it uh, one time. So you got a total of seven minus two because it's an unskilled roll. Uh, gets you a five. So well done. See, sometimes doing unskilled things pays off. Uh. As he's fixing it, he's just going to kind of holler from behind the piano. No good town to go without a little bit of music. And you see kind of the um, the mechanics of this piano. It's a, it is a player piano, but it can be made to be played rather than have a reel go through it. And it looks like whoever was you know trying to set this up kind of flipped the switch midway between both settings and so it was it was getting a little caught up in the in the player reel so you kind of reset that and switch it over to uh to be able to play um and uh you do you want to play it yeah i'll take a little ivories okay give me a performance roll all right now watch this gonna be the one that i eat it on <laughs> oh no <laughs> It's okay, we've all been there. <laughs> oh snap, actually I succeed with a seven. Ooh, nice, ooh. nice. One shy of a success with a raise. And uh yeah, you uh you start playing a, a little tune. What what kind of tune are you playing? Is it sad? Is it happy? Is it fast? Is it slow? I think um on on the guitar he plays old Southern Delta, but on mm -hmm. the piano he plays some classic. And I think it's gonna be a sadder version of green sleeves oh okay all right so that can get sadder <laughs> yeah oh it can <laughs> <laughs> i want to hear it <laughs> do 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 one key at a time yeah. <laughs> uh yeah what uh, um uh, what what brings you folks here to Gumption? Well, I actually have met you. Have I ever seen this person before? If I've been in town before? Um, uh, give me a common knowledge roll. Common knowledge. I'm a real common knowledge. -y. Uh, oh boy. Um, I got a three. Um, you don't recognize her, but you also didn't often come to the saloon, uh, when okay. you were in town. So it's quite possible she's, she's from here, but yeah. Okay. Well, I live outside of this town and I don't know that I've seen you before, which I guess doesn't say much because I usually try to avoid people. Uh, <laughs> But oh. I was here just to resupply. Okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. I, I'm here. The. Uh, I am. My name is Crispin, and uh, I am the owner operator of uh, this here uh, uh, saloon and hotel establishment. Uh, pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, likewise, Crystal Void. Crystal Void. By the way. <laughs> Crystal. Franklin. Crystal Void. Crystal yes. Void. Right. Well. Uh, yeah, I do remember some folk talking about a crystal void. I, I thought they were talking about a thing, not a person, but uh, it, is, it is nice I, to meet you, ma'am. I am a person, so... Right. No, clearly. <laughs> uh, anywho. And you? Well, I'm just uh, here passing by, but I am curious... Um, your establishment, is it usually this, um, empty? Not to put too fine a point on it. Uh, 
I was hoping you wouldn't notice, you know, between the the handy small talk and such and and and, and between might... the nobody being here but us. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, there's not a lot of people here. The whiskey's fine, so it can't be that. No. No, I don't think it is. Um, you'll forgive me. I, I I really don't know what's going on necessarily. The this town was was doing all right. I mean, we're a mining town, so so there's a few claims out in the in the mountains. You probably know that, ma'am. But uh, but yeah, you know, some some miners have been here and and uh, uh, working and and uh, I don't know. A, a railroad is being built down to Junction Springs. That's that's about fifty miles. But uh, usually, you know, that that doesn't like drain the populace that quickly I, I mean people people were here they they were here they were coming in we we were doing brisk trade <laughs> and then now, now 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 everyone's gone I, I i see i see glimpses of people sometimes but but where they've gone i don't know I, how I've, long ago did they leave and did they leave all at once yes yes well that's the funny thing it's at first, one or two people left, and and uh, and that seemed, you know, it was sad. But we said goodbye, and they were gone. And then, and then more people just started up and going. And then one day, I woke up, and near everyone in town was gone, except me. That doesn't seem right, does it? Not at all. Yeah. What? What is so special about you? I don't know. Maybe they're scared of me. She pats her pistol. I mean, uh, um, you know, something of a crack shot. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I don't know why not me. And that honestly is kind of why it hurts so much. <laughs> Ma'am, yeah. might I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah, anything. You wouldn't happen to have had any strange dreams as of late, would you? Well, <laughs> uh, I had a dream. Oh, I can't even remember when now, but where I was old and, uh, Gray hair, gray beard, gray braids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, it was gray hair and just my my. I looked like someone put me out to the sun and you know poured an onion on my face. I just <laughs> was weathered and beaten. I don't know what happened, but did not look right. Remember feeling out a particular order. Think real hard. Uh, no. Can't say I remember necessarily. Uh, why? Oh, because I remember having a dream with a very kind bartender, leathery skin, gray braids. And I do recall ordering or having ordered on my behalf four whiskeys. whiskeys and an empty shot glass and an empty shot just like you had here. Ain't that funny? Well, yeah. Well, I, well, that that don't make no sense though. <laughs> like. I, I've never seen any of you before. I don't think you've ever come through my no, stash. I have not. And I, I, I kind of feel like... Excuse me, but you... Uh... I'm so sorry. Life doesn't make sense and death even less so. Okay, I do not follow that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, well, it does appear that we have gotten caught in uh, the strands of fate, destiny, or something darker. Uh, um, I mean, can I, would I have any knowledge, like, could I do like an occult role or something? Would I have any knowledge of something that could cause this, something supernatural? Sure, give me an occult role. Does anyone want to support? I will gladly support. Okay. Oh, I mean, I, you can take the support as well instead if you like. No, so you both can. Yeah, you both can oh, roll. If you want. Um, yeah. Um, just tell me how you want to support. I'm wondering if I can draw on any knowledge from either my travels or my cultural background to know if there's anything supernatural like this that I've heard of before. Okay. Uh, give me an occult roll. And what about you, Othello? I am going to think to my co-passenger. Now, I know that you can feel and connect with that one. You gonna help her out. And I might let you take the seat, so... Um... Do you even know what you're asking? Clearly, I never do, or else I wouldn't have made a deal with you in the first place. <laughs> I like you, musician. You're fun. Sure. Ask away. Thank you kindly. I think that one might be able to figure it out. All I need is a word or two to get her brain thinking in the right way. Um, so what do you want to roll? Because you are not giving yeah, I'm not uh, over to, yeah. your, to your demon. You're not letting the devil I, out here. I think I'm kind of trying to persuade my devil to just give me one or two words that'll help Crystal kind of put this puzzle together. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, give me a persuasion at a minus one because dealing with your Manitou is not, <laughs> yeah, it, it ain't fun. This ain't, yeah. this ain't a good idea by any means. Um, what did you get, gonna... Daniki? Holy shit. Um... I got a, I got a, uh, 10. Ooh. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. What did you get, Daniki? Um, I got a four and then a five, but I'm at a minus two. So. Okay. I think three. So three is their highest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Uh, um, if I'm going to give the floor to Othello because I, I, whatever he's going to come up with, I want to know. It sounds good. <laughs> so you reach back and, uh, you know, about. The Deadlands, you've heard stories, uh, you know a few things, but but this particular like connection of souls, uh, you it doesn't ring any bells. It's it's a little um it's a little outside your depth. Um Othello, um the uh the Manitou hears your plea and uh kind of thinks and Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can give you some. I can give you some things. Yeah, you were all connected via the Deadlands, and that's uh, that's really all there is to it. Sometimes, you know, the the reckoners like to uh, like to tie people together just to see what will happen, and I think they might just think that you all are maybe uh destined to do something fun for him. That's all. Uh, the whole time it's talking, Othello's eyes are like dead and staring at Crystal in the shining green a little brighter than usual. And his head cocks to the side and he's just repeating the words. 
So yeah, Crystal, you you get this, and it uh, infuses your reckoning back uh, through your occult knowledge. Give me an occult roll at a plus two because. Uh, Othello got a success with a raise, which gives plus two to support rolls. Thank ooh. you. Uh, ooh. Uh, so that's a six total with a plus two. Nice. So, um, you, uh, do you want to re-roll it? Uh, to see if I can get a high. Sure, let's try it. Let's do it. Let's see okay, Benny. spend a Benny. Wow, it is not better. It is worse. So, but uh, I'll just keep the six. Um, all right. Uh, do you want that to be one of your pl- your player pool bennies or one of your own bennies? Oh, the you t- oh. you have two player pool bennies that any of you can choose from, and I have one. Thank you very much, chat. Oh, I see. Yes, uh, I will use one of my bennies on that. Okay, I was going to say. I was going to say, I don't mind if you did a pool once. This is, you know, this was like team effort. Sure. Eh, uh, it's okay. I'll just, I'll, I'll just use mine. Draw one of your own. Okay. I don't mind. Thank you. Um, you go back and yeah, the Deadlands, Deadlands connecting, Reckoners. You've heard all these things before. Um, you know that your magic is directly connected to the Deadlands and uh, even to the Reckoners themselves. And in this town, you feel a very strong connection to the Black Magic Core that comes from the Deadlands. This is almost like a, a ley line of magical energy is in this town, but it's not because um, magic is practiced here necessarily, but uh, you, you can sense the stench of fear in this town. And that is giving you a little um, feeling of power, uh, but also um, that, that has a tendency to tendril out. And if it's true that the Reckoners are um, sort of tying people together in ways that they think will be chaotic, um, then having a hub of black magic here with y'all so close to it, it might have just connected you all. And the powers that be are just waiting to see what powder keg explodes when you all get together. Okay. Um, so I kind of uh, take the information that Othello uh, imparts through the Manitou and think about it. And, uh, and I kind of like dramatically turn to the side and, Pull out Othello and er, pull out Othello. Pull out Franklin <laughs> and <laughs> Laertes. Who are you? <laughs> I was and, in your pocket um, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. That's the secret. Um, and she just kind of like is mumbling back and forth all the information that you said, and then eventually she stops and she turns around to, to everyone and she imparts this information and she just, she just says, "Well." This uh, area has a very uh, powerful amount of, of, of um, energy. You could call it um, dark energy, maybe. Uh, and I, I, I think that uh, we are all connected by it. It would be, be called a dead land if, if anyone is interested in the actual information, which can be quite interesting. And she just kind of continues on in this way, getting a little bit excited about what she's talking about, but also very ominous about it. Uh, Denitki, <laughs> you, you don't hang out with Harrods or witches or anything very often. And you know, for my own well-being. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> uh, and yeah. maybe you kind of turn to Charlie and Charlie kind of turns to you and you both kind of exchange a look of, okay. 
Uh, but um, you, this jogs your memory, and you do remember elders speaking of the Deadlands, and they speak of different people connected to the Deadlands, and there is a warning of not uh, allowing yourself to sort of fall into that trap of using the Deadlands or using the Manitous, the demons, um, for uh, anything. So that that plays in the back of your head, but you also know these people were by your side in this dream. And you kind of have that sort of dueling um, perception happening right now. Because Crystal is getting very excited about black magic evil. and evil things and, and stuff happening. Um, not in a maybe dangerous way, but but feels it almost feels reckless to you. Um, it's like when oh. people are like, they, they, they just go outside and then there's like no protection at all and it's dark outside and you're just like, yes, come and get me. That's kind of like what's happening right now. Hmm. Crispin um, kind of looks wide-eyed and also kind of shares a look with you and then kind of looks and smiles. <laughs> oh, the, the, the dead lands, you say. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, can't say I heard of them. They're probably Southern Utah or something. I don't know, but um, uh, that's that does kind of sound like what happened. Um, well, I, I I wish I knew what 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 else could. Uh, and as she's speaking, you hear a uh, a rustle and. She draws her gun and fires and it hits the edge of the saloon door and you hear footsteps running off. There's someone watching us. And she jumps over, leaps over the bar very handily and runs after them. I would uh, like to follow. I'll be going too. Uh, as everyone rushes past Crystal, she she kind of goes, "Oh, we have to hurry, Franklin!" And then we follow as well. Franklin, you don't have legs, but move faster. <laughs> and uh, you all run outside, and you see a figure jumping onto a horse and start riding away. And we are going to connect with that person next week as we run a chase <laughs> Ooh, i'm very excited oh hell yeah <laughs> so let me turn off this creepy music because it's creeping me out um <laughs> oh, <divine. laughs> uh all righty yeah so um uh that was amazing um real quick uh, let's, let's dole out some of these, uh, rewards that have happened. Um, Ooh. uh, Ooh. I, first I want to thank bad guy, make bad guy face. Why not? Uh, I'm sure you'll need this. Thank you for that tip. Probably. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We have... We have unlocked everything. Thank you very much. Ooh. Um, and we are going to, because we've only got three episodes, we're going to advance. So um, uh, we are advancing. Um, yes. So in an advance, you have a few things you can do. You can uh, raise an attribute one die type. If you have not raised one yet, this rank, you can do that once per rank. So you, none of you have done it yet because you just started novice rank. So you can raise an attribute one rank. You can raise, uh, a, uh, you can raise two skills that are 
below your trait type, including buying a new skill at a D4, or you can uh, raise one skill, one die type that is at or above your trait level. Does that make sense? So if your agility score is a six, is a D6, and your fighting is a D6, you can raise that to a D8 using this advance. Uh, you can also uh, pay down a hindrance. So a major hindrance can be reduced to a minor hindrance, and a minor hindrance can be removed altogether uh, if you want to do that. Um, so those are the things that you can do. However, chat has unlocked a few things. And lest you think that these are things that can't happen, these are actually alternate setting rules, which I am just using uh, for this. So um, you can upgrade one skill for free, but not over your trait die. So this is a variant of the more skill points optional setting rule, which gives you 15 skill points at character creation rather than 12. So... Um, yeah, you can so you can upgrade one skill for free. So that's one thing you're going to be doing. Um, we are also using the born a hero option optional setting rule, which means that you can access uh, any edge. You can add any edge regardless of rank qualifications. Whoa! One, you get one edge. But that's what you'd use your advance for, is adding an edge. Okay? Um, uh, you also, this doesn't come into effect here, but you also will get the ability to reroll one critical failure. This is the dumb luck optional setting roll. Just one. All right? Next session we will introduce the adventure deck and we will use the adventure deck to uh, sort of expand the story a little bit. The adventure deck gives different mechanical things that can happen. Uh, you can call in the cavalry, you can uh, um, heal things, you can find weaknesses. You, there's a bunch of different things that the adventure deck uh, gives you. It's just drawing a card and you read what's on the card and you can use that at any time. Uh, we are going to do the adventure deck and lastly, but certainly not leastly, each of you gets your choice of a relic. Oh, we, will, we will discuss that on Discord, on our Discord, uh, this over the week. Um, but uh, yeah, that that has some uh, that has some consequences. Um, so thank you, chat, for unlocking all of those things. You are amazing. We will continue our goal next week, uh, and you will unlock even more things for, for these uh, characters. But I am excited. You have advanced, so you are now novice rank. Uh, this is your first advance. You have two more advances, and then you become seasoned. Uh, so um, we're almost there. To season. Um, so, uh, Megan, where can people find you? Oh, uh, you can find me at Megan Caves, M E G H A N C A V E S, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, it's Megan Caves Actor, but mostly everywhere it's Megan Caves. Um, that's the best place to see what's going on. Um, we'll see, coming up. Uh, they're Harbingers, which is my Savage Worlds show on my um, my production company, Gone Rogue Entertainment. We have a chat back this Friday, and you can ask your questions now. Um, there is on our socials at Harbingers RPG or at Gone Rogue ENT. You can find the uh, questionnaire for that. Um, that's 7 p.m. Pacific on YouTube.com backslash, no, slash Gone Rogue Int. Ugh. Oh, so many things. Um, yeah, and then I've got a couple of other things coming up, including some more Savage Worlds and some D and D. So check out my um, uh, uh, social for that. Yeah, that's, that's where awesome. You're <laughs> uh, Nick, hi. Uh, you can find me 
on Twitter at by underscore rogues. Everywhere else, it's by rogues, no underscore. I'm the DM of Legends of Laia. We are coming back to our regular um, publishing schedule starting, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll be publishing twice monthly. I also stream on Twitch um, quite frequently. So follow my Twitter because that's where I keep everyone updated on all my shenanigans. Nice. Noir. Howdy. Uh, I'm 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 stuck talking like this for the rest of the yeah. night. So hi, it's hard. Everybody. It's hard to break that. Me <laughs> how? Uh, I'm Noir Nigla. You can find me all over the internet as the Noir Nigla. That's Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Uh, you can catch me every su- uh, Saturday morning for our talk show morning ritual. Uh, we've got a backlog on YouTube. Just look up Critical Misses and Morning Ritual. And uh, for everything else, just look on my Twitter. That's where you'll find me. Brilliant. And uh, I am Dom Zook. You can find me on Twitter at Gadzook, on Instagram at Dom.Zook, I think, but I don't do anything on Instagram, so don't even follow me there. Uh, but Saving Throw Show everywhere else. Catch up on all of our shows on our YouTube um, and many of them as podcasts, including Wild Cards, which was our Savage Worlds show here. Remember, if you do go on YouTube, to like, comment, and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified so that you know when new content gets posted on the channel. And if you've enjoyed this show, there's a ton more Savage Worlds content that we've done on this channel from Wild Cards to Megan's Mysterium Games uh, to our Savage 60 Seconds uh, shows that uh, episodes that we did. There's a lot to watch, including, um, I mean, I think there's something like 60 different RPGs we've played. More than that, maybe. Um, just between RPG Exploration Society all games, no masters and and other things we have uh, played the breadth of RPGs. So if, if you're ever looking for something um, we've probably played it (laughs) and um, uh, this Sunday at 4 PM Pacific, the God kids return for their final talk back session uh, of new Pantheon Academia. The The series ended um, and, uh, we're very sad to see that, um, story close, but hopefully something new in the future. Um, this is one of my favorite shows ever on the channel. No joke, no lie. Uh, the chat is sure to be bonkers, um, as they talk about fan theories and resolutions and future plans and more. Uh, so tune in this Sunday at 4 PM right here, twitch.tv slash saving throw show. And uh, if you ever want to talk about uh, us making new shows or 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 uh, creating more content, consider supporting us on Ko-Fi. It really does help. Uh, consider a show like this costs a lot of money to to operate. We're lucky to have a sponsor for this, but most of our shows don't have sponsors. And uh, if there's a show you really like and want to keep going or you want us to start or something, we look to our supporters on Ko-Fi. So if there's something you want us to do, um, consider supporting us on Ko-Fi. And that really goes a long way to, to helping us make decisions for, for new shows. Uh, exclamation point Ko-Fi on there. And lastly, join our Discord, exclamation point Discord, where we will chat about this specific show this episode uh, in its own thread, but also you can chat about anything. We have channels for Savage Worlds. We have channels for D&D. We have channels for everything. All of our shows, you can go and chat about just about anything on our Discord. So I hope that you can join us there. And don't forget about the giveaway. Uh, Many entries to be had. So I hope you've been earning channel points here that you can uh, spend later on. Tell your friends about the show. We hope to see them in the future. Other than that, anything else, gang? All right. Since this is our this was our first gameplay, let's end it with some finger guns. Pew 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 pew. pew. My shooting score is terrible. Pew pew. <laughs> He's like, ah.